So for the force lab, concept zero for the force lab, and I'm not gonna read this, this handout to you because you guys are, are almost adults, if not adults. Some of you are adults, I'm just kidding. Um, but you guys can read that for yourself and, and get what you need out of it. But I do, let me just explain some terms that I use. If your lab, for example, was, and we used to do this like cookbook uh, friction lab, uh, was how does the force of friction depend on the weight? It, it gets more, by the way. Heavy things are harder to drag, right? But you could hook a force scale. I've got these little force scales, right? You could hook a force scale to this, and you could try just uh, uh, sliding a block along the plane. Then you could put on some mass, and you could put on some more mass, and you could put on more mass, and more, and more, right? Okay, the weight in this case, what you're putting on here, this thing here, Okay, this thing is the independent variable. Okay, the independent variable is also known as the manipulated variable. Right, it's the thing that you manipulate. Shh, be quieter than that. Okay, so that's the independent variable is, is I, I try just the block, then I try 200 grams, 400, 600, 800, a whole kilogram, right? Okay, that would be my independent variable. In this case, the force needed to slide this at a constant speed, okay, this would be my dependent variable. Okay, now, now, you know, standard thing to do, by the way, is to graph them this way, right, force this way. Right, so dependent variable up and down, independent variable, right, so in this case, the weight. Right, so graphs, a standard graph is dependent there's three E's independent, right? Okay, uh, and then independent this way, whoops. When you make the graph, right? Okay, um, and then it, it is force versus weight. Right, so whenever you, whatever you decide your axes are, it's always Y versus X is what you, when you say that, and kids always mix those up, but that's just the standard way to do it, okay? Um, and then, yeah, okay. So I'm not gonna read this thing for you, um, but there, there are certain things that they want you to do. Uh, they want you to make sure that you spread these out. Like, like for example, um, you, you would wanna do at least, for this thing, you'd probably wanna do at least five different variations, right? At least five variations of this, and then you would also want to do, you wouldn't want to do just one trial, right? And so it seems like, if I just read all their examples, it seems like they want you to do at least three trials, right? And you need to talk about that. You need to say specifically what the dependent, what the independent variable is, right? All this stuff in there. That you need to talk about how many variations and what variations you're gonna do, right? And they need to be appropriate variations. So like if you're gonna do something with an incline plane and change the angle of incline and uh, measure how long it took uh, uh, some object to roll down the plane, this could be your lab, right? It could be something really simple like that. So you just take an incline plane and try five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees or something like that, right? And then just time how long it takes to go down there. Um, you would wanna pick angles. You wouldn't wanna pick 30 degrees, 30.5 degrees, 31 degrees, 31.5, you'd want to use like a wide range of angles. Or like these masses, you wouldn't want to try the block with one paper clip, the block with two paper clips on it, right? You'd want to do like the block, twice the block's mass, three times the block's mass, et cetera, right? So read through there, there's, there's all that, there's notions about all of that stuff in here, okay? Um, that's that, and then the final thing I'd like to do is just, just brainstorm some ideas that you could have. I'll just throw ideas that kids have done out there. Okay, all it, has to have, all it has to do with is, it has to have something to do with force, and very little has nothing to do with force, right? So in the past, um, we've had kids take uh, inclined planes, right? And then they just try different heights, and they'll, they'll, like, like you could do, how, how does the time, how is the time affected by the height of the ramp, right? Um, how about this, you take an inclined plane and you keep the angle of incline constant, or you use one of the inclined planes that we have around the school, like the freshman hall, right? You take a water bottle and you put different amounts of water in it. Is that gonna affect how long it takes to roll down the plane? Yeah. It actually does, right? How about, how about this one? I'll throw, nobody's done this one, right? But what if you stuck like uh, different concentrations of, you took the same water bottle, but filled it 
with like five different concentrations of like corn syrup, which you can buy in large quantities. It's very cheap, right? And you put those in there and sealed them up with uh, corn syrup. That would affect it too, wouldn't it? How about this? How about the same incline? Keep the incline the same, right? And try different canned foods. My daughter did this for like fifth grade for like some science inquiry thing, right? Do different canned foods roll at different rates? Can we stop the private side conversations, all of us? Do different canned foods roll at different rates? Yeah, it turns out they do, right? And then, then we actually discovered something uh, somewhat more ominous is that black beans roll slower and slower. Like the first trial, they rolled something in the third trial. We kept rolling them. They kept rolling slower and slower. So there's something going on there where like they mix or something like that, right? And then they get more gluey or I don't really don't want to know, right? Um, but anyway, uh, you could do that. I've had kids do this. Um, I've had kids uh, tried putting different masses on wheeled carts. By the way, the, the, the acceleration should be independent of the mass that you're rolling down the plane, okay? Um, but it's not, it's not exactly independent because we know that like, for example, in bobsledding, uh, heavy bobsledders are better than lightweight bob bobsledders for some reason. More mass can overcome, I don't know, air friction or something like that, right? Okay, so um, we, we've had kids put different masses on wheeled carts and rolled them down planes. Um, we, had, we had a kid do, um, we had a kid do uh, different amounts of coffee filters. If you take a coffee filter, you know those kind for like automatic coffee makers, and drop them, they float nicely down and keep, they don't like tumble, they just go like this. They're beautiful, right? Okay. You could try one coffee filter, two coffee filters, three coffee filters, four, like nest them together, or put weight in one of them. It works better to just nest a bunch of coffee filters, right? So you're, you're manipulating the weight of the coffee filter and you're measuring the time it takes for them to fall, right? Um, you could just do this, right? You could do force of friction. You could do force of friction, how it's affected by different surfaces. Even better would be like to bring in different grades of sandpaper and drag them across different grades. Does it matter whether it's rough or fine sandpaper, right? You could try different surfaces. You could try mass, right? See, it's, better, it's best if you can make like a nice little graph for it, right? Um, questions about this? So what you're gonna do for next time is come up with this idea. You're gonna pick, pick a couple variables Think about how you might measure them. I've got little force scales. You've seen them that can measure force. I've got all sorts of mass sets so we can change mass. I've got inclined planes. I've got stopwatches. Pick what, pick what your variables are going to be, okay? Uh, pick what, how many variations and what variations you might try, right? And then just think about how many trials you want to do, right? Um, and you don't, please don't write a big fancy procedure for next time because you'll probably have to change. What we'll do is right before the skill set, is I'll put you guys, we'll sort of see who's doing force of friction and versus weight, right? And put those people in one group. We'll see who's doing like in something with an inclined plane. You're driving me crazy, please stop. Okay, um, we'll see who's doing something with an inclined plane, right? We'll put those people in, in. So people that have the same kind of variables, they can all work together just because we don't have enough for every single person to be a rock in an island. Um, and then again, for the lab, you're going to write up your procedure in some detail because that's all this lab is about, right? And then you're going to make a graph of it. And then you could choose to do a fancy conclusion and evaluation. You need a conclusion and evaluation, but it, whether it's fancy enough to meet all the IB criteria, right, um, is up to you. But I would go for it because so often you just don't have a lab that you can evaluate as well as something like this. Okay, are we, are we good on that? Enough blabbing? All right, so that's, that's that lab. And then 